Hello, my friends, it's Krebsy here, and we're doing task number three. That task was to get 35 fighter kills. No, that doesn't mean that I have to get 35 kills in my fighter. It means I need to kill 35 fighters. Okay. So anyway, before we start this, big shout out to Osaka Express who says that he would like to send out all of you a hug in this video. All of you are receiving a hug from Osaka Express. Shout out to him. Anyway, here we go. So the way that I decided to do this event was to do it in my Russians at tier 9. I just really, really have a lot of confidence when I'm flying out with the Russians at this tier and mostly because they have so many awesome planes. I mean like there's been videos I've posted up before where I've gone out with the Japanese and I've done really really well with the Japanese and I like to say that the Japanese are some of the most powerful for the tier, especially at tier 9 and such because there's three planes in particular that are really powerful. Oh, uh, even just before this, look at this. It's an A6M3 only way that I'm able to kill this guy and have success against him was doing a vertical corkscrew. Yeah. Man. I, I don't know how, the, the, how that worked. <laughs> Usually A6M3s can outturn you and just kill you straight away, but uh, lo and behold, I guess the speed from my dive allowed me to climb up more than him, get the stalling speed, and boom, he's gone. So anyway, about the Japanese. The Japanese at tier 9 have three planes in particular that are very good. A6M3 Mod 22, the A6M3, and also the A6M2. Those are the main power uh, killing killing dishers, if that's what you want to call it, at that tier. And you can do really, really well in them. You can get really high kill streaks as long as you're playing them properly. However, you only have three of them. And say if you have a bad game and you know two of them get killed off you, or something like that, you know, you're not going to have that many to fly out with. Whereas when I'm flying out with the Russians, at tier 9, there's what, the LA-5 Fen, there's the LA-5F, the LA-5, there's the Yak-9K, the Yak-9T, there's IL-2s, <laughs> there's a ridiculous amount of things available to you up to tier 9 that are really good planes, and so that's why I decided to go out with them, since there's no particular plane you have to fly out with, you just need to kill 35 fighters. So I had a really good game this time, and just got about half the requirements as, uh... In, in one game, so there's a lot to see from this match. I've already taken damage on my tail and my fuselage, but doesn't matter. We've got Stalin. Oh, here we go. It's not Stalin wood, it's Stalin Inium. Stalin Inium, my plane is made of. Shit, okay, I've got myself in a bad position. There are like five guys around here, just killed somebody off, and the teammate. Right, I'm hoping my teammate is gonna stay behind because I'm getting the hell on out of here. <laughs> just like a bat out of hell. Uh, I think I might look back just because like you know I want to see what's firing at me but also see my, if my teammate is still back there but uh, whew, what I'm doing is I'm escaping and hugging along the sides because I don't want the, these guys to have a clear shot on me especially when I'm coming around these corners that gives me a lot of cover and so there's one guy that was tailing after me what am I gonna do now am I gonna keep turning around or am I gonna go down I'm just surveying the air the airspace and yes there is a yak one following me I'm gonna take a bit of cover I'm gonna take a bit of cover and then I'll make a turn here we go here we go here we go and hugging the cover and here comes the turn here comes the loop-de-loop -loop. and lo and behold we're behind him <laughs> just that quick isn't it now the question is do I finish him yes there you go I like to say, don't lose sight of the person that you're going after, because if they see that you're firing at them, chances are they might turn around on you and try to kill you. So, this is the LA-5FN that I'm using right now. Awesome plane. It only has two cannons, uh, nose-mounted ones, so it's very accurate. You don't have to worry about gun convergence, so to say, because you don't have wing-mounted cannons. And it's two cannons, but they're very, very powerful. They do a lot more damage than you would expect two cannons to do. Now, the only problem with them is that they don't have a lot of ammo. It's something like 360, I'm just po you know, pointing, poking a number. Uh, it's, it's an educated guess, if that's what I could remember it last to be. Uh, 360 around there anyway. Ammo rounds, so it's, it's a lot, but at the same time it's not a lot. You can get maybe one kill, two kills, but you'll have to reload uh, pretty quickly. Oh dear. <laughs> Yak 90. 
Do you guys notice that that was actually a kill as well? Notice how it went from uh, six kill streak to seven kill streak. So he killed me, but the collision, or maybe my bullets killed him just before we collided into each other. So seven kills so far, and that was the LA5FN. Now I'm going out with my next LA5. I don't remember if it's the F, the 5F or the 5, I didn't take a look there. But this is how I like to work my sequential order. I go LA5FN, then LA5F, then LA5, and then Yak9K, then Yak9T. Usually I won't get to the end of that, but that's you, what I like to go for. Just because the LA5Fs, the LA5s, you can you can spray and pray with them, can't you? And that's that's the beauty about it. The Yak-9T and the Yak-9K are very, very powerful, 37mm cannon, but it's more like sniping. And that can be a bit difficult to do when you're trying to kill fighters, because fighters are naturally smaller targets than heavy fighters, bombers, attackers and whatnot. But, so that's why I like to use these spray and pray cannons on the LA-5s first. And hence why I use these planes first. But this is African Canyon, a uh, really good map to play on. It's usually more of a newbie oriented map, isn't it? It's sort of like one of these maps you first play this game, uh, when, you first, when, when you first come into this game. Just one of these common ones to play as a newbie. But. Overall, it's a very decent map because you can sort of segregate it down two ways. You know, you've got the left hand side and the right hand side. What I like to start off with, I like to approach it by just going directly in the middle and then I suss out what I need to do. If there are guys coming straight on, are there guys on the left or are there guys on the right? Whatever is closer, that's what I end up going for. Ooh, LA5 is tailing after my, my fr <laughs> teammate. Let's see if I can get him. Nope, but there's the MB410 that's coming even closer. I'm uh, just gonna damage him. I'm not gonna turn around on that. He's ha he has so much speed. Chances are, if I turned around on him, I wouldn't have enough uh, speed to come to uh, catch up to him. Hellcat up here, and just notice that I'm just going for whatever target's closer. Now, did you guys actually notice this? This is task number three, and what we're supposed to do is kill 35 air targets. But do you notice that every time that there's one of these events, people just play the game differently? Okay, so in the first event you had to kill ground targets, people were mowing the lawn. They were just going specifically for ground targets. In the second event, you had to kill uh, 35 or whatever number of air targets, I completely forgot now, like 36 or something. Air targets. And then people with a certain plane, and people were just jumping out of those planes as soon as they died. Okay, they would try to get as many kills and then they just jumped out, and that just changed the gameplay entirely. And now this time, you'd be like, oh, well, how does it change the gameplay when people are just going for their usual air, air targets? It can be anything. Well, I noticed those people were playing really, really defensively. Like, I mean, fair enough, this G4N1 or whatever, he's not, he's not defensive at all, but... Well, I noticed on so many maps, and not only this one, but other ones as well, is that it seemed like to me, maybe you guys thought differently, but for me anyway, it felt like people were playing really defensively. Like, a lot of times we had teammates just hold, held up in our base, a lot of times people, the enemy had teammates held up in their base, and it was just kind of hard to crack it. You just go in, you joust into the enemy, and lo and behold, within a few seconds you die, because there's just so many of them. They're playing really defensively, all competing to get these fighter kills. You know, why would why would somebody go attack an attacker or a bomber or whatever when there's a fighter nearby? It's it's fighters that they need to kill. Alright, so A20G and PE2. I'm still going after normal targets because I can. I mean if they're there, you know, that's still points. It doesn't add up to the event task. But it's still points. I'm always I'm always for getting some points. Now, the place to aim for this on any of these attackers and any of these bombers or whatnot, anything that has engines on the wings, you have to aim for those engines, okay? Because those are the weak points. They can catch a fight uh, on fire very easily, they break off at that point very easily, and you'd be surprised at actually how easily they break off. Just try it. Next time you're fi firing at a plane with engines on the wings, Aim at those engines specifically, 
And make sure you land a lot of shots, you know, don't expect one shot to break off their wings. You need to aim a number of shots at that engine. If it doesn't turn, you know, black, if it doesn't break, if it doesn't get caught on fire, it will eventually break off. It will eventually break off, and that's actually one of the easy way to kill, to kill uh, bombers, because a lot of times they can soak up damage. Just shoot for those engines. They come off. Ah, BF-109. Coming down for a dive. I don't know what's going on. I feel like people are leaving me alone. And I have a feeling a lot of you will probably notice this as well, but you get these games sometimes where it's like people want to kill you all the time, and then you get these games where it feels like nobody wants to kill you. And it's like, why? Am I invisible? Am I not worthy to be killed? Well, that's a BF109 down. It's not like you would keep up that turn too well. As an LA5, I can outturn him. The LA5s are really good at turning. In fact, I probably like when I think of turners, the the best ones, in my opinion, are going to be Japanese, then Spitfires, and then you have like a toss-up. All right. In third place, I would put the LA5s uh, as as the best turners in, in arcade. Okay, this is arcade. I'm not talking about historical. You have the Japanese first, then the Spitfires, and then the LA-5s. That's, that's in my opinion, the best turn fighters uh, in, in the game. Alright guys, but these are the results coming on up. It's 15 kills for one death. That's just about halfway through the event. Mind you, maybe I killed some attackers and whatnot. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Until the next episode, this is Krebsy, and I'll catch you all later.